Hi there, I'm Tim Gray with an impromptu special edition of Tim Gray TV. In this episode, we're going to talk about hashtag the dress. In case you missed it, well, what am I saying? Who could have missed it? This was a huge controversy on the internet. The internet basically short-circuited with conversation about a dress. Now, to be sure, I would never expect to be consulted as an expert in any way, shape, or form on a subject related to fashion. But I did get an email from a tech writer asking if I could weigh in on this controversy. And that's actually how I learned about this issue, about hashtag the dress. It turns out that with a particular photo of this dress, a blue and black dress. I promise you, the dress really is black and blue. If you saw the dress in person, there would be no ambiguity, no question whatsoever. You would see the dress as black and blue. And in fact, with 99.9% .9 of photos of this dress that probably exist anywhere on the planet, you would also see in that photo a black and blue dress. So what happened with this image where some viewers were seeing the image the dress itself as gold and white, not black and blue. How on earth can this happen? Well, I assumed that it was probably some trick related to color management. And I'm going to show you an example of that a little bit later. But actually, it is just white point adaptation. The reason this specific image causes this visual trick is that there's a degree of ambiguity. The image was captured under a sort of golden light. There's not a whole lot of references around the image to help your brain clue in to what color was the light. I'm sure you've had this experience. You see a white object, for example, that's illuminated by an incandescent bulb, and that bulb then has a little bit of a yellow tint to it. So we have sort of yellow light illuminating a white object. But if you see that white object under yellow light, you know it's a white object because your brain is just automatically calculating the color of the light and sort of subtracting that from the scene. Now, because of this feature of our human visual system, we're actually able to trick ourselves. We can be fooled so incredibly easily. In fact, I highly recommend that you check out a website called PurvisLab.net. We'll put a link right down here. You can go to PurvisLab.net, click the See For Yourself link, and you will find a variety of images that will strain your brain. You will see tonality variations and color variations and all sorts of other good stuff that will trick your human visual system. And that's exactly what was happening with the hashtag the dress image. Because there were no visual clues to help your brain understand exactly what the color of the light illuminating the scene was, it's easy for you to get tricked. And so your brain is sort of auto-correcting, but some of us correct one way, some of us correct the other way. And actually a small percentage of people are able to sort of switch back and forth. Their brain will correct it one way at one time and another way another time. But it is that specific photo that was causing that issue. But it did make me think about a couple of issues related to color management that I wanted to share with you. The first is brightness. With this image, if you brighten up the image a bit, then it actually does start to take on the appearance a little bit more of white and gold because the black areas look a little bit bronzy and the blue areas start to brighten up so much that they're nearly white with a slight blue tint. And so that relates to our monitor display and I suspect it may have played a little bit of a role in this case because on average, when a display is not calibrated, right out of the box, it's about twice as bright as it should be. A full stop too bright, and that could certainly impact your evaluation of the image. But it also, reviewing these images, made me think about another trick related to color management. And I want to show you that essentially the exact same image file can look very different depending on whether it's being viewed in a color managed environment versus a non-color managed environment. Let's take a look. What I'm going to do is process a couple of images. First of all, here is the PurvisLab.net website, and you can click the See For Yourself link in order to view all of the various little tricks, as it were, that will fool your visual system. But let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. I have a couple of images here that I'm going to process. First off, a view of Horseshoe Bend, and then a house up in the Pyrenees Mountains, a building anyway, up in the Pyrenees Mountains. And for both of these images, what I'm going to do is go to the Edit menu, and then choose Convert to Profile. And I'm going to choose a profile that I know creates some rather interesting interpretations of colors, but because I'm using the Convert to Profile option, Photoshop is going to attempt to keep the actual appearance of the colors as close as possible to the original values. I'll go ahead and click OK to convert to that profile. 
and then I'll switch to the other image and perform the exact same step. So both of these images have been converted. Now to be sure, some colors were out of gamut in the original, and so you'll notice a little bit of oddity in terms of the appearance of each of these photos, but overall they appear pretty normal. So I'm going to choose the Save As command, and I'll just rename each of these images so I know which one is which. And it is important to note that I am actually including the ICC profile. So the profile that I used to convert this image, the destination profile, is being embedded as a color profile for this image. That means that if I open this image, either of these images, with an application that supports color management, I will get an accurate view of the photo. So I'll go ahead and do that. Out on my desktop, I'll simply drag and drop each of these images in turn into a web browser that supports color management. So here is the Horseshoe Bend shot, and here is the Mountain House shot. And you can see they both look a little bit off because of the specific profile that was used, but they look reasonably accurate. But then I'll open the same images with a different web browser that has color management turned off, and you'll see that the images look dramatically different. So here is the Horseshoe Bend image, and here is the Mountain Houses image, again, having been converted to a profile that creates some rather unique interpretations of color, and then not color managing. In other words, ignoring the color information in terms of the profile that is embedded within the images, causing the color information to be interpreted based on my display profile rather than the embedded profile. So there you have it. Again, in this case, I'm showing you a little trick related to color management. This is not the issue at play with the hashtag the dress image, but looking at that image, seeing some of the commentary and responses made me think about some of these other issues. But in any event, I promise you, it really was a blue and black dress. It's just a visual trick. Be sure to go check out those illusions at PurvisLab.net. You will be amazed and bewildered by how easy it is to trick the human visual system. Well, thanks very much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you on the next episode of Tim Gray TV.